So I went to the store, so we're gonna make slaw. So you got your red cabbage, your green cabbage, English cucumber, celery, and I like the different colored carrots because it gives it a nice look. So tonight, I'm gonna make slaw. Well, not like the mayonnaise slaw that you're used to, that you normally get anywhere else. Um, what I'll use is a uh, balsamic vinegar and a grapeseed oil and salt. And that's all I use. And that's pretty much what I use for any salad dressing, but I use a green cabbage, I use a red cabbage, and I like the different colored carrots because it just adds not only color to the whole salad overall, but I do believe in colorful foods add different nutrients to yourself. A uh, couple of celery stalks and I use an English cucumber. I've already used half of this for another slaw. And I try to buy everything organic just only because it tastes better. Uh, most people say, oh, there's no difference in nutrition. That's not the point. The point is, is it tastes better, tastes more natural. Uh, and anytime I wash any of this stuff off, I've already washed all this off. I use my collagen water. I don't use tap water because it has chlorine in it. And it changes the taste of vegetables. So if you don't have that, I don't know what to tell you pat it dry, make sure you don't have any of that uh, chlorine water on there. So I'll wash everything off with the collagen water or any filtered water uh, and take off a couple of the husks on the back of these. Like, you know, when you first get them in the store, you take these husks off and like, all right. And so you get a nice clean surface. And then what I'll do is I'll cut, I've already cut these in half. I'll cut them in quarters and then I'll show you next how to cut the cabbage, make it easy. All right, we'll start with the green cabbage. Doesn't matter which one you start with. So I'm just gonna cut that in a quarter piece. Obviously, you don't wanna use a half piece or anything like that. Give it a thin slice and make sure you have a very sharp, I use Vustoff knives for everything. And this is the most used knife that I have. It's not serrated. Watch out for your fingers. I have definitely chopped the tips of my fingers off, but it's only happened a few times in 30 years, so I'm not too worried about it. You know, don't cut it more. I would say about an eighth of an inch or less. And then when you get down to where it starts to break down, stop. Leave that off to the side. So we're gonna take this, take your whole hand, squeeze it together and then about a quarter inch on each one. And then when you start getting close to your hand, let go. And just keep going. I find this is the best way to make slaw. Don't use a mandolin. Don't use any fancy stuff. Just, just use a knife. Take your time, pull it together, bring everything together. Don't need to rush it. It doesn't take that long. And then when I get there, I just cut this piece all the way to the stock, the center stock. And then what I like to do, that's what my grandmother always did. I eat that part. This is the hard part. Let that one go. I'm gonna take all this, I'm gonna and I'm gonna put it into a large bowl. So I'm just gonna take this. Obviously washed hands, all that stuff. Get all the goodness. I'm gonna do this with everything. So as soon as I'm finished cutting one vegetable, it goes into the big bowl. Use a big bowl, don't use a small bowl. I've done it where I've used a smaller bowl and it comes up to here and then I end up transferring it to a larger bowl. So just use the largest bowl you can. It just makes it a lot easier. It's the same cleanup time. So now we're gonna do the red cabbage. Same thing, cut down the center, watch your fingers. I'm gonna take a quarter cabbage. You don't need as much red cabbage, it's a little bit tougher. 
and you want to cut it as thinly as you can. Red cabbage is a little bit tougher. Well, probably three times tougher than the green cabbage. And again, this is organic stuff. I get it at Whole Foods. And I've said it before, it just tastes better. You can tell the difference. I'm not gonna name any names. But when you get start getting close to the stock, you wanna cut the meat of that. And when you start getting too close and it starts getting a little hairy for you, too close to your fingers and it starts getting wobbly, it's a stop. There's no rush. And then we're gonna go ahead and do this. See, it doesn't take that long, you know? And this is gonna last three to four meals when this is all done, even with just a quarter. Uh, so you cut it right the first time, and there you go. We're gonna take our bowl, and we're just gonna transfer it into the bowl here, along with the green cabbage. And then uh, next up is carrots, celery, and cucumbers. So I peeled these carrots using this Westmark uh, peeler. I find it being one of the best. It's got one of the sharpest blades and it literally takes off like, it feels like a 10th of a millimeter of the carrots or anything that you're peeling. Uh, so it saves the best part. Because a lot of peelers will take off so much of a carrot or anything else that you're peeling that you're just wasting a lot. I mean, this literally takes off a piece of the carrot. You can see through it. So what I do is I cut off the ends. Carrots are tough. It's not fun for people to dice these things. And I just cut off the ends there. Let's get those out of here. Put those on the side. So let's start with this white carrot. So you got like a fat end and you got the short end here. And Take your time, always put the point down, and then rotate that way. Uh, when the really big ends, I will go ahead and do two cuts, and then I will just go ahead and push it through. And then when I get close to my fingers, I slow down. I've cut the tips of my fingers off way too many times. It's not worth it. So again, one, two cuts. In other videos, we'll be cutting a lot of carrots, a lot of celery, a lot of veggies. Get close, nice and slow. Put those off to the side. And when you get down to the smaller ends here, I'm just gonna do, guide it through one cut. And you get used to it. You get used to it cutting, you get knife skills. But the last thing you wanna do is cut the tip of your finger off. It really sucks. And I love these carrots, just the way they look. The red ones, I used to grow these out in my garden. They're fantastic. When you grow them yourself, the earthy flavor of these things is mind blowing. That will be another project shortly. I gotta get my garden back together again. So I just do those, pile them up, center, get your fingers out of the way. And I'm showing this whole process just so you get comfortable with it. You know, half, boom, turn these on the side, center, down. Knife skills are very important, especially the way you hold your knife. Trust it, have it sharp. I use Japanese sharpening stones for all my knives. And once every few months, I will go ahead and sharpen all of them. And they're crazy sharp. I mean, literally, you can take your finger off with these things, so. Fingertips down, and there you go. There's all your carrots. How long did that take? What, two minutes? Two minutes to cut three large carrots? 
and then that will now go into, we'll just take those, throw those in here, because we're making a slaw. If you need to make more slaw, then you double up on it. Instead of just a quarter, you'll do another quarter, and so on and so on, and just use a bigger bowl. So now we'll go on to the celery. So celery can be kind of funny, especially the bigger stalks. I cut off the ends, and sometimes you eat these little dry parts in there. Get rid of that. And then you get some cracks and stuff, and just get rid of that. And then take the ends, get rid of those. They turn a little brown, nasty. Um, you go, I cut them in half. Uh, if they're really big stalks, I'll do three cuts, but this one, I can just do two. Just a single cut down the center, center. I can do all of them at once, but you know, don't do too much of it. Don't do too much at a time. You know, you can always back up the, overdo it. Or you can do it this way too. You can let the, if your knife skills are good, you can let it roll down your fingers. And these, again, cut down the center. You just don't want big chunks of veggies in your coleslaw. When you get good, you can get go a little bit faster. Nice slicey. There we go. So there's all your celery, and that part's done. And that goes into the bowl. Next up is the English cucumber. I take off the plastic and then I wash it down again with uh, the collagen water. And, and feel, cucumbers are funny because they can last for five days or a day. Um, this is, feels a little soft down here, so I'm just gonna cut this whole part off. Let me cut a little bit more off there. It doesn't feel good. And of course the open end that was been sitting out. So once we got that out of the way, Again, cut down the center. We have our two pieces. Now these I like to do one, two, three slices. Again, you don't want big chunks in your, in your coleslaw. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And as you get better, you get faster at it, it makes it easier, it's not a big deal. So we get that. There you go. Easy cooking. Making food easy. The idea is to make it easy, but it looks fantastic when it's done. Move it along. And I like this eight inch chef knife. I used to use some toku knives. I do have some and there's uh, certain ways there's certain times to use those. So now that we've got those there. Uh, Santoku knife, a smaller one. I'm gonna throw that in there. I use, I bought a $150 Santoku knife. I've, I, don't, I think I've used it a few times only because I felt guilty that I spent so much money on it that I have to use it. All right, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so now we got a bowl of everything here. Uh, you can mix it up by a big spoon, but what I like to do, give it a shake, 90 degree turn, give it a shake. 90 degree turn, give it a shake. And this takes some getting used to also. And now we have A nice mix of all the vegetables. You know, if you can do more if you want, you know, it depends on what you think. You look at it, check it out. So what we're gonna do next is we are actually going to do the dressing for this. So what I like to do first is I love grapeseed oil. Uh, olive oil really overpowers everything. So what I'll do is I'll just Dust this 
maybe a quarter to a third of a cup of oil. That's all I had left in that one. I have, don't worry, I've got more. And then what I'll do is I'll take a spoon, a large spoon, and go ahead and just mix up the oil in it first. And that way, the oil separates the vegetables from themselves. It coats all the vegetables. That way they're not sticking together. So when you make your dressing with the salt and the balsamic, it distributes nice and evenly. So see there, everything moves nicely. This is the beginning of an amazing sloth. No mayo. The only fat in here is the oil, grapeseed oil. What could be better? I mean, it's amazing. Look at that, easy. So I will go ahead and let that sit for a second and then uh, let's make the uh, dressing. So you can use a cup like this or you can use a measuring cup, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, again, love my quarter teaspoon. I do one, two, again, you can always add salt. You can't take it away. That's important. And then I'll put one, two, three, four, five. And then let the salt crystals meld with the balsamic vinegar. And just make sure they work with it there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little more oil to this, mix it up, and then pour it onto the, uh, into the bowl, and then we'll mix it up again. Just got a little more grape oil. I'm gonna throw that in there. I'm gonna mix that up. Now it separates very, very quickly. So once we mix that up, I'm gonna take our original coleslaw here. Give it another little mix. And while you're mixing it, you don't want to let it stand for more than three or four seconds because it will separate quickly. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to pour it over everything. Doesn't seem like a lot. You don't need a lot. You want to drown it. You can. You can drown it if you want, but What's gonna happen is the salt is going to extract all the water from the vegetables. And you're gonna get, even though it's dry down there, the bottom, in about 30 to 40 minutes, all the water is gonna be extracted from these vegetables with their own natural water content. And then all of a sudden you're gonna have this huge pool of dressing at the bottom. So what I do, when we're done with that, I mean, that's basically done. Uh, you can go ahead and taste it. I don't like things being over salted. I mean, that's absolutely perfect. Half a teaspoon for that whole thing. If you need more salt, add the salt to a cup, add a little oil, or some balsamic and mix it up and pour it on. You don't want to pour the salt directly onto the vegetables because then they'll just stick to that one vegetable and then you get one spoonful of salt. Just a little tip, just a tip. And that's it. And then what I'll do is I'll take this, I'll put it in the fridge and let it soak itself. And then I'll put it in a large glass container and then have four or five meals out of this, this one slaw right here. And if you're cooking for a group of people, you can just make more. And make you can make it the day before. It'll stay, it's cabbage. 
I mean, this stuff stays, I've had cabbage stay good for five, six days, and it's fine, probably seven days. But just give it a good mix, and we're all done. And that is perfect, amazing slaw with no mayonnaise and not soaked or anything. And it really is the best slaw. I mean, when people come over here for barbecues, they ask for it, so I always make it. All right, that's it. We're done. That's going in the fridge.